This is a late Sunday, October 28th update on Hurricane Sandy. Conditions are already beginning to deteriorate from North Carolina northward as the storm begins to approach. As of the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center, maximum sustained winds are 75 miles per hour. The storm is currently moving toward the northeast at 15. However, a gradual turn back toward the northwest is going to occur within the next 24 to 36 hours. And although no hurricane warnings are in effect, you can expect hurricane force winds along the Delmarva Peninsula, all of coastal New Jersey, with gusts exceeding hurricane force well to the north, including New York City and potentially even Boston. Once the storm moves inland, you can expect tropical storm force winds to still be present because this is going to be more so of a hybrid storm, so it's not going to weaken as quickly as a perfectly tropical hurricane would. And also, the storm is going to be fairly slow moving. You can see by 2 p.m. on Thursday, the center is still expected to be across upstate New York. So inland rainfall is going to be very significant, and we're also going to be talking about freshwater flooding in addition to the coastal storm surge. Anyone that is still doubting the forecasters or the intensity of this storm just needs to go to our Facebook or Twitter accounts and see some of the pictures that we're sharing. The center of circulation of Sandy is located 270 miles away from Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, but nonetheless we're seeing pictures from the region of homes falling into the ocean as a result of the storm surge. This isn't even the peak of the storm. We're expecting much worse in the way of the higher waves and the higher water levels as the storm approaches New Jersey and Long Island. So all interest there, if you're under an evacuation order, you need to go ahead and leave now or make preparations to leave before the end of the night before conditions rapidly go downhill starting early tomorrow morning. Here is another photo being shared on Twitter, and this is coming from coastal New Jersey, and the storm is still nowhere close to New Jersey yet, and despite that, we're still seeing very high waves. This pier is probably going to be taken out within the next few hours, if I had to guess, so I can only imagine what the conditions will be like during the peak of the storm. This is a look at the surface wind field summary of Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane force winds that you see shaded in dark red extend 175 miles away from the center, and the tropical storm force winds extend well over 500 miles from the center. You can see that coastal North Carolina is still being impacted, and that's why the tropical storm warning is still in effect. We've seen wind gusts there exceed 64 miles per hour over the past 24 hours, and although those warnings are not in effect, as we said earlier, you can expect the worst weather to be across the coastal regions of New Jersey and Long Island, with even significant impacts being felt as far north as the New England states. We are still receiving one-minute rapid scan satellite images of Hurricane Sandy. This is the final look at the visible imagery right before sunset, and you get the overall idea that the storm may be a little more organized than it was a few hours ago, and the hurricane hunters are reporting that the pressure is starting to at least slowly fall once again, the latest model guidance is showing that the pressure may be in the 940s territory as the low crosses the coastline, which is pretty much unprecedented for a storm like this moving into New Jersey and Long Island, especially during this time of the year. So you need to be taking all those precautions if you are under any type of advisory or warning from the National Weather Service. This is the latest 18Z run of the GFS model valid for late Monday night into Tuesday morning, and this presents a multitude of problems. First and foremost, I know this graphic is somewhat hard to read, so the center is crossing into eastern Pennsylvania by this time, and nevertheless we still see very strong winds in the low levels across Boston and New York City. This is why we're very confident that at the very least you're going to be experiencing wind gusts in excess of 70 to 80 miles per hour. But the threat is not just limited to those areas. Even as far west as the Great Lakes, we're looking at very strong northerly winds, the models are projecting seas in excess of 20 feet across even Lake Erie. And I know that's somewhat hard to believe, but we're going to show that to you here in just a second. And finally, off toward the west, in West Virginia, in some of those higher elevations, the GFS model is still depicting 1 to 2 feet of heavy snow. That is the reason why the National Weather Service has had to issue blizzard warnings, believe it or not, for the western side of Sandy. Just to further validate our expectations for the New York City metro, this is a look at the latest NAM forecast, and it's showing maximum wind gust potential. And some of those lighter green colors are areas that could exceed 77 to 81 knots in terms of wind gusts. So you're looking at potentially as high as 90 miles per hour. Also, just to elaborate on the Great Lakes threat, this is a look at the Lake Erie wave heights as we go deeper into the forecast period. You can see the wave heights are expected to exceed 25 to almost 30 feet near Cleveland which is somewhat concerning, so there is the outside threat of some flooding there along the lake shore. Please keep it tuned to your local meteorologists as they will be more up on the situation across northern Ohio.
One of the last graphics I will show you is the regional water vapor animation and this is going to be something that all meteorologists along the country look back on later on in life because this is going to be one of those once in a lifetime events that you will hardly ever see on satellite ever again. The forecast philosophy laid out this scenario for the past week but we see a blocking ridge out across the Atlantic provinces of Canada that prevented the storm from moving northeast and out to sea. Instead we still have that ridging and we also have more troughing coming in from behind the storm across the southeast United States and it's taking on this negative tilt which just simply means that the trough is oriented from southeast to northwest so between this trough and the ridging over the Atlantic provinces of Canada that is what is setting up the alleyway for this storm to track directly into the mid-Atlantic states and the remainder of the northeast. You can see the outflow of the storm stretching well into eastern Canada already and this is just one of those more prolific storms that meteorologists will always talk about for the rest of their career. Here is just another look at the eastern United States with the water vapor but also with the 500 millibar mid-level heights overlaid you can see the trough swinging through and this is the scenario that we were talking about for well over a week the potential of a fully tropical cyclone starting to phase with the trough and between now and landfall the storm is going to only intensify as it starts to be enhanced by baroclinic influences basically this non-tropical trough is going to take over and instead of the tropical origins being the reason for the storm intensifying it's going to be more so mid-latitude effects and that is why we are so concerned Please stay with 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app throughout the duration of this event. If you go to 28storms.com right now, as always, you will see the latest discussions, blogs, and video updates like the one that you're currently watching there at the top of the page. You see this red link in the middle. This is a source for more news and emergency links from across the East Coast of the United States. And also, I would like to bring to your attention a new contest that we started earlier today. You can go ahead and submit us your best weather photos and that will enter you into the contest to potentially win a NOAA weather radio, which is always a very good item to have in the event that severe weather is approaching. So thanks for following 28storms.com. We hope that you found this video useful.